Hello everyone. Here in this video, we are going to see bending moments of beam. But before going to that, first of all let us understand what a beam is. A beam is an uniform bar or rod having rectangular or circular cross sectional area whose length is very large compared to its thickness or radius. We see beams in construction sites for buildings and in bridges. They are used to support heavy loads. When the beam is in vertical position, they are called as pillars. When the beam is clamped to one end, that is the one end of the beam is clamped and the another end is loaded, they are called as cantilevers. When we apply some uh, force to a beam, that is imagine I am taking a, uh, imagine this to be a beam, I am giving force at this ends. So what happens, the beam starts bending. It depends upon the elasticity of the material. So when the beam bends, what happens, in the upper surface, you see lengthening of the layer and in the lower surface, you can see the shortening of the layer. That is because, that can be understood uh, deeply with this uh, vertical lines I have drawn. You can see extended lines above and below. The lines are very close when, to, uh, when a force is given. And in between, you can see a horizontal line. I have drawn a horizontal line that is called as neutral surface because in this neutral surface there is neither elongation nor compression in this neutral surface. So to understand more I am going to draw another figure so that you can get a deep idea of that. So in this figure uh, so the beam is bent with some force and you can see that uh, the neutral surface is marked as A, B, C, D. In this neutral surface there is no elongation or compression. And you can see a plane, the plane of bending that is P, Q, R, S is the plane of bending. And O, O prime is the axis of bending. This plane of bending and the neutral surface intersect at neutral axis and it is marked as MN. Now when we load uh, the beam symmetrically that is we are taking a beam and we are going to give a symmetric load at its ends. So what happens the beam starts bending. Here we can see the neutral axis it goes at the centre, right? When we, we extend this neutral axis we can get a circle. So the centre of this is the centre of curvature. And the distance from this center of this curve, center of curvature to the uh, neutral axis is the radius of curvature. So when we uh, give uh, symmetric load at its ends, we call such type of bending as uniform bending. So here what happens, at all the point in this axis, this radius of curvature is same or uniform that is why it is called as uniform bending. In the case of um, non-uniform bending we clamp one edge and give load to the other edge. So what happens? The beam bend like this. So when we give some load. So here the neutral axis at this neutral axis the radius of curvature is not uniform that is why it is called as non-uniform bending. So 
Now we are considering the case like we are fixing one edge or clamping one edge and we are loading the free edge. So what happens? Because of this applied force, the beam bends and so there is a force acting downwards and at the fixed end, there is a reaction force which acts upwards. And these two forces are equal and opposite and they form a couple called bending couple. The moment of this couple is called as bending moment. Here also another couple comes. When the beam bends, as I said earlier, when it bends above this layer, there is a tensile force and because of that lengthening happens. And below that comes the compressive force and these two forces are equal and opposite and these two forces form a couple and this couple is called as balancing couple and the moment of this balancing couple is called moment of resistance of resistance to bending. At equilibrium the bending moment and also the moment of resistance to bending is equal and opposite. Now let us see the expression for the bending moment of the beam. Now let us consider a small section PQRS in the plane of bending. Here MN is the neutral axis, O is the center of curvature and R is the radius of curvature. Here we are considering a layer above the neutral axis x, y and this layer is at a distance z from the neutral axis. Above the neutral axis there will be elongation and below the neutral axis there will be compression. From this figure we can write mn as mn is equal to r theta and x, y is equal to r plus z theta. So the change in length here is r plus z theta minus r theta which is equal to z theta. We know strain is equal to strain is change in length by original length. Here change in length is is a theta and the original length is r theta. So we get strain as z by r. Here the strain is linear strain. So the modulus of elasticity in this condition is Young's modulus. So we know Young's modulus y is equal to stress by strain. So from this we can get stress is equal to y into strain. We have found out the value for strain. So we get stress is equal to y z by R. Let K L M N be a cross section and it is taken uh, perpendicular to the length of the rod. So if this is the length, K L M N will be here in this space. So P Q is the neutral surface. The distance M N gives the breadth B and uh, L M gives the thickness or depth D. 
we are going to take a small element dA above the neutral surface. It is taken at a distance z from the neutral surface. So, as we have seen, above the neutral surface we see um, stretching or elongation and below we see compression. So, we can see the stretching force in this layer. So, the stretching force on this element is force is equal to stress into the small dimension that is d. So, we have found out stress earlier that is y z by r into d a. The moment of this force acting on the neutral surface P q is moment of force acting above P q is equal to y z by r d a into z which can be written as y z square by r d a. So, this likewise um, uh, also uh, there will be moment of force acting from the lower side also. According to the definition the sum of the tensile force and the compressive force over the entire cross sectional area gives the bending moment of the beam. So, we can write bending moment Bm as summation y z square by r d a. Since y and r are constant we can take this out. So, we get summation z square d a. This term summation z square d a is equal to i g is equal to i g which is a geometric or second moment of inertia of the sectional area about the neutral axis. So, I g is equal to summation over z square d a. Here i g is equal to a k square where a is the area of cross section and k is the radius of gyration about the neutral axis. So, this equation gives the bending moment of the beam. Here we see two special cases. One is for the rectangular cross section and another one is for circular cross section. If we take the rectangular cross section, there the breadth if we take breadth to be B and the thickness to be D, then area is equal to so, I am going to write the special case.
So, in this case, A area will be breadth into thickness and the value of k square is equal to d square by 12. So, when we substitute this in the bending moment, we get bending moment is equal to y by r into a is b into d and then k square is d square by 12. So, we get b d q by 12. So, this is the case for bending moment for the rectangular cross section. The second case is the circular cross section. Here we know area is equal to pi r square and k square is equal to r square by 4. So, when we substitute this we get bending moment is equal to y by r into pi r power 4 by 4. So, which is equal to So, this is the case for circular cross section and this is for rectangular cross section. Here the quantity yig is called the flexural rigidity. So, we can write this as bending moment of the beam as flexural rigidity by radius of curvature or we can define, define this flexural rigidity as the external bending moment of the beam for a unit radius of curvature. Thank you.